Welcome to the Run Shoot Diaries podcast. This is where we talk about managing your time in ways that helps you accomplish your running goals. Lace up to get your race up. Let's get moving. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody out there running on native land? And welcome to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast. I am your host, Luis, a.k.a. Chico, and this is episode number three. Thank you for spending some of your precious time listening to the show. I appreciate it. I'm definitely not going to waste it. Lace up to get your race up and let's get moving. We're at the starting line with this episode's guest, and he is definitely one of the leaders of the new school when it comes to endurance running. He is the founder of Indigenous Trail, and he shares his love for running on and off the course. To top it off, he just became the proud owner of a Bighorn 100 belt buckle for completing 100 miles through the rugged terrain and unique geology that is the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. It is with great honor that I welcome my first Indigenous guest to the Run Shoot Diaries podcast, Mr. Scott Flatlip. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello. Glad to be here. All right, man. So you're on the show that doesn't like to waste time. Go ahead with your introduction, my friend. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Scott Flatlip. I come from Gary Owen, Montana. And I am Absaloga or Crow. I love it, man. So the great state of Montana, tell us something interesting or amazing about the state that most people would not know. Uh, Montana is the home of the TP capital of the world. It's the only place you can go in the world with thousands of teepees that are set up at one time. And that happens here at um, right down the road in Crow Agency. Um, around the third weekend of um, August. Have you always been located in Crow Agency? Is that where you grew up? No, I actually grew up in Pryor, Montana, which is like um, on the kind of north side of the uh, Crow Reservation, um, about 68 miles away from where I currently live. So what do you do now? I am a health enhancement uh, teacher, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm a PE teacher that teaches physical education and health. Okay. Have you always been into athletics? Um, yes, I have. I, you know, being that I'm, um, I grew up on the reservation. I, there's basketball is, you know, basketball is life. Yes. Um, running is, you know, life, um, riding horses, you name it. Um, as far as being athletic football, there were the ones we mainly played basketball, running cross country and track. And that was pretty much it. So, so you just hit on something that I wanted to eventually get to, but you talked about basketball being life. And so I live down here in Texas. And when I try to mention that to them, like they just don't get it. Like, mm -hmm. it, no, basketball is life. And like, I try to explain it as much as I can till I'm blue in the face and they, they don't think it is. Can you kind of elaborate on that, on how basketball is such a staple in our athletics on the reservation yeah so like how texans have uh football as the way of life down there and how the whole town goes out to watch the football games and they just support the football teams to the <laughs> yeah. max it's like that but like with basketball here um you know as soon as um i guess kids um, are born, you know, they're like, oh yeah, give them a basketball. So they usually <laughs> always have a basketball with them. And, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just something that's a way of life. When, when I, when I say a way of life, I mean, it's like, there's a lot of people who play basketball on the reservation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be playing basketball. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just something that happens just about every single day. Uh, if not, then there's tournaments. And then if there's not tournaments, then there's, you know, pickup games. And then there's the street ballers. And then there's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it just kind of yeah. goes on. So let's let's kind of revert back to reservation life. Do you have any siblings? I do. I'm the youngest of five. Wow. So being in athletics and being the youngest, you probably had a lot of competition. Uh, yep, yep. So... Uh, yeah. So for me being the youngest, I had to pretty much fight for just about everything. I had to fight for scraps. I had to fight for, um, to be heard. I had to fight to be the 
the best, which oftentimes when I was younger, wasn't always the case. I was always the, um, oh, we don't want to pick him or let's yeah. just leave him home or, and so, um, you know, it was always like that growing up. Yeah, I definitely feel that because I was I'm in the same boat. Well, I, I don't have any siblings, but I mean, you know, as well as I do, yeah. your, your cousins. Yeah, extended are, family. Yeah. 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 So I was the youngest out of everybody and I was in the same boat as you. So w- with your work schedule, can you kind of hit on how you train? Because you have such a great resume as a runner is very very fulfilling. Can you kind of fill us in on all these ventures that you've been on uh, from adolescence to now? So adolescence, my, my dad was uh, pretty big on having us run when we were little. Okay. Um, he had a, his philosophy was that if we ran, if he had us run when we were younger, that maybe eventually we would become Olympic athletes or something like that. Um, when we were little, so he kind of had that, had us go through, um, AAU cross country, USA track and field. Um, and so at a young age, I think like we started, or I started when I was like six, six years old or so. Oh man. Um, and it, that was just by, by like, kind of like accident, you know, we went to a race for my brother. Yeah. And, um, I was like, Hey, I want to, I want to do this too. And it wasn't a very good race for me, but um, that was the start of it. And then throughout that time, it was just, we always ran in the fall, the winter, the spring, and then the summer. And every year I would always be like, I wish we could just stay home. And I wish I could play with my, my friends and my, my brothers and yeah, uh, stuff like that. And so, then through going through, um, leading up to high school, I mean, I, again, I hated running. I was like, yeah. basketball was my thing. I, I, <laughs> I thought my, I thought basketball was my thing, but yeah. Uh, uh, so going through running in high school, I never, I hated it. You know, my brother was the superstar, had to be in his shadow. Um, you know, it was just like, Oh, I'll just do the bare minimum. And, um, you know, I would, I would lie to my dad and say, Oh yeah, I ran at school. And <laughs> he would say, Oh no, if you, if you ran, then you, and you're in shape, then you should be able to run, uh, three miles easy then. It, yeah. He go. And so he would take me and I'd be like, ah, all right. So we would go. <laughs> um, and so that was pretty much my, I mean, my experience growing up. I mean, it really wasn't, I, I'm again, I really wasn't into running it. In fact, I hated running with a passion. Yeah. <laughs> a- after, uh, your academic years, how did you keep going with running? It was just always something that, I mean, again, it was something I did since I was a little kid. And then, so it was always, it was always there. Like I would, I would, wouldn't run for so many weeks or months. Yeah. I would come back and then somebody would be like, Hey, I'm going to go for a jog. Did you, what do you want to go? And I'll be like, yeah. And in college, that's what I did a lot. And then, um, it wasn't until I, um, graduated in, and then I was like, Hey, you know what? I think I might want to go back to school to try and run. And that was where I was like, kind of started slowly started kind of the beginning stages of me enjoying running. Okay. Where did you go to college at? I went to, um, to run. I went to MSU Billings and I was the only oh, okay. one at the time. Yeah. Oh, nice. I went to MSU. Well, I started at MSUB, did my first year there, and then uh, was off to the Army. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell us about running at MSUB. Uh, I, I was the only walk-on. Um, I, was the Love only, it. I was the only native on the team. Um, yes. And so, you know, I mean, I didn't train in the summer at all. I pretty sure I started like two weeks before our first practice. So I was like, I was kind of into the running thing, but I was yeah. like, wasn't, I was still was like halfway in between those worlds where I was like, ah, I don't really want to run. I, yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to run. Ah, we'll just see how it goes. And then I just went and, um, but it was good. It was a good experience. I had good teammates, I had a good coach. Yeah. Um, I improved a lot during my season. Um, and there was, again, of course, I guess with, with any, um, 
student or any human, I guess there's challenges and there's obstacles and there's oh, yeah. certain things. And then me being a Native American, there's, you know, discrimination, racism, you know, those yeah. things that you go through throughout your whole life, you know. So Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. So we went through all those and then um, I improved a lot. I was – I at the end of the season i got um a little a little coach's award of, of uh, most improved uh on the team which at the time i was like that ah, doesn't mean anything to me you know yeah and so uh later on and i'm like man i wish i would have i wish i would have grabbed that award because yep. now i'm like god that would have been nice to hang up in my in my office or in the house or somewhere yep. you know yeah definitely hey uh so is there any person that motivates you or inspires you to keep running or, or has inspired you from at a, such a young age? Um, of course, Billy Mills, um, you know, yeah. I, I, and then I, I got to a point in my life where I wanted to be a person that motivated others that inspired others. Um, and so it was cause you know, uh, in our society now, you look at uh, ultra runners today, and majority of them are um, white. Yes, um, and so I couldn't relate. I can't. I can't relate to like Jim Wamsley, or I can't relate to uh, <laughs> Killian Journey, or or any, yeah. anybody like that. You know, I have a hard time relating to them and finding more right. through what they do. I mean, again, what they do is awesome, and I really like to watch them, and I really like. I really like them. Yeah, but I can't really find that motivation from them, yeah. or inspiration from them because they're not like me. They didn't grow up like me. Um, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't grow up like how I grew up, and so, so then, so Billy Mills being the the person that was pretty much the only Native American, yes. or the only human being on the you know Western Hemisphere to ever win the ten thousand meters gold, you know. Uh, ever and so then it was like he was the one that I guess um, I looked up to yeah um, but you know it wasn't it wasn't like how some people were like oh you know Bill Mills said this and he he did this and he trained like this it was just like I acknowledged the fact that he was somebody that paved the way and so then yeah. I was like I want to I want to be someone like that in my yeah. mind you know and so I try to I try to do things in hopes that it motivates somebody or it inspires right. somebody. And so I try to be my own inspiration and motivation as well. So that's good. And, you know, you mentioned Billy Mills. I don't remember what year it was, but he came to our reservation, Blackfeet reservation. Mm -hmm. And I think he did like a one mile run with us. Yeah. And so we got like these t-shirts and everything and a bunch of little kids, you know, you kind of, don't know what you're witnessing or experiencing at that time. I yep. wish I, I wish I kept that shirt though. Yeah. 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 When, when we, um, so my brother helped us win two back-to-back -back state championships. I, I didn't contribute at all. I was like, I was like almost last place, but, um, I got to be a part of that, uh, those, um, the trophies. And so he, yeah. he came, he came and spoke to us one year, one of the years, and um i don't remember anything he said but <laughs> i have the picture i have the picture of us and we're all standing around him and he's talking to us and you know it's a it was a good it was a good moment i it, at that time uh but again i didn't i didn't remember what he said or what yeah. he was like, talking about and then uh my son I, actually his middle name is mills nice so we named him after billy mills <laughs> love it man and then one, then we went to a, a race in Gardiner, and uh, he was there st talking. And then he was like, "Oh, there was this family in Bozeman that asked us, uh, asked me for a name, and uh, asked me if he asked me if I could um, uh, give him the okay to use Mills for his <laughs> son's uh, middle name." And and here they are today. And then I was like, "Oh man, that's cool, man!" And so we kind of like we kind of got up and we did the little like yeah little wave and then we i hold, held my son up and we took pictures and and um it was a pretty good little moment so i was like yeah man awesome he didn't have to do that but he yeah. was like he remembered and he was like i'm gonna acknowledge him because he's here so i was like all right man cool thank you heck yeah that's awesome man hey so let's revert back a little bit we know you're a pe teacher 
you've been in athletics for so long now. Let's talk about family. Uh, you married, you got kids or anything like that? Yep, yep, I got three kids, married, yep. How does your training and your job, how do you fit their schedules in with yours? Yep, so um, I wake up when I'm able to. Uh, I wake up <laughs> around 4.30, 5.30 in the morning, um, depending on how far I need to run um, or depending on how long I need to be out as far as hours or minutes go. Okay. And then I'll, I'll do, so my, my um, time is anything uh, before seven. So as soon as seven o'clock comes, um, I finish up, I get ready, um, and then I kind of help the kids get ready. And then when there was no COVID, I would get them up for the bus. And then, yeah. then they go to school, I go to school. Uh, which is kind of funny because they don't want to ride with me. They want to ride the bus because <laughs> we go to the same, we go to the same uh, town where we have the, our school. And so yeah. they, they like to ride the bus. They don't like to ride with me. Uh, <laughs> and so then, um, then I go through school. Not only am I a PE teacher, I'm also a coach. So oh, nice. I have, I have um, coaching duties after school as well. I'm an assistant coach for cost country and uh, okay. middle, middle school boys, basketball coach, um, and then I'm a, um, a middle school uh, track coach as well. Oh, and wow. So, and so my, my year is pretty, yeah. pretty busy. I think the only time I have extra time, extra time <laughs> is... Quote, um, quote unquote. Yeah, is um, in October, end of October. So once October is done, then I'm like, I get home right at like around 4, 4.30-ish. Yeah. And then I have like that extra time to go out and do more things. So when I'm coaching and I'm in the season, I'll either run before school and after I get home. So okay. it, just, again, it just depends, depends on the mileage, depends on the week mileage, depends on how many hours I need to be out. Um, so I've really, and that's when I first started really enjoying running, I, yeah. I made it a point to run early um it was a little sacrifice that i felt was important for my children's um lives and my wife and everybody who was around me at the time um i thought it was very important to get that time done right away and then have oh to yeah after that. so that was how i kind of started and then i just kind of nowadays i'm kind of like modifying things here and there right. and i'm changing mileage here and um, making sure with, you know, it's a lot of communication with my wife because my wife oh, is yeah. also, um, I, I jokingly say she's my, um, manager, but she, she really is like, she really does a lot of the managing things for my races, for my, wow. my nutrition, my, uh, my fueling. Um, so she's, she's a pretty big, important part of my, what I'm have created for myself today. So that's awesome. I love that. Way, way to keep it in a family and keep everybody involved. You know, I mean, I'm a big advocate of having your family by your side yeah. and I can see you're doing the same thing. So I'm right there with you, bro. So let's talk, you said nutrition. Do you meal prep at all? I mean, because I see you have a very heavy schedule. Do you meal prep or you just, how do you, how do you get it, get around that? Um, not, no, I, I mean, I, I probably could benefit from meal prepping, um, if anything, we probably meal prep from leftovers from the night before. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There, but not really. We, my wife is pretty much, um, again, she's the nutritionist, I guess, in my my training. Um, and, then there, and then there are some days where I'm like, hey, you know what, I'm, I'll make this if you make this. And then we kind of go back and forth. And so um, not really, we don't really have a lot of meal prep. Okay. We do, we do know what I can and can't eat. <laughs> yeah. um, and we know that there's, um, things that I really do enjoy and things that she kind of has to keep away from me. Like anything with huckleberries in it. It's Oh it's man, that's me over. too. Over, that man. is me. It is over, man. If you have anything huckleberry in front of me, it's, yep. it's over, man. I'll eat, I'll eat it up. There's no, no chance at all. You know, so, it's, it's crazy down here. We get blueberries. So I kind of have to revert oh, yeah. to that. But yeah. as soon as I get to Montana, man, it's just yep. huck huckleberry, everything. And yep. uh, my favorite uh, gel, uh, 
uh, is the Hammer Nutrition. Uh, yeah, Hammer. Yeah, that's right. The, the Huckleberry, Montana Huckleberry one. All right. So, do you cross train at all? Um, not specifically, but okay. I do. Since I am a PE teacher, there are days where I um, do a lot of uh, demonstrations with okay. the workouts that we do. So I'll, I'll go through the workout with them um, and I'll do a little demonstration. And so I do that throughout the whole day. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> so you repeatedly, kind of are. <laughs> repeatedly every single like period. So then it's like after a while, yes, it becomes, uh, uh, I guess, a form of cross training. Um, there are some days where I do um, like a circuit like a core circuit or like a leg uh, circuit. So uh, as far as cross training, that's pretty much as good as it gets for me. I mean, I do understand and know that I probably can benefit from uh, a, a, a strict uh, cross training schedule, but yeah. with my, with my already busy schedule, yep. it works for me to do what I can here and there. So. All right. So let's talk about what is your, favorite race distance and why my favorite i guess is 50 mile and then my second would probably be a 50k um i am pretty new to the uh, above 50 mile distances so um i think i like i like the 50 mile because i with where i'm at right now i'm i'm uh somewhat fast yes you are <laughs> yeah so. so you know so Personally, my favorite is the 50 mile as well. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is, is because you can get a full day's work. You can get your body to that, that point of your like, what the F am I doing here? <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you can, you finish before everybody else and you can help, uh, you can celebrate, you can help mm -hmm. at the aid stations. There's a lot more you can do on the other side of running. And yeah. so that, that's why I like it. And then you still get the soreness for the next three, four days. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. personally, that's why, what I like, but, uh, you said you're fairly new to the above 50 mileage. Is there any nutrition products that you like to use during the, uh, your competitions? Yeah, I do. I really enjoy, um, tailwind. Okay. Uh, that's, that's my go-to right now. Um, I have used uh, other things before, but um, my favorite thing to use right now is Tailwind because it's um, pretty much everything you need. You don't need to have gels. It's just you know water yeah. and then mix it, and then that's pretty much pretty much it. And so it's easy to pack and uh, it's easy to carry. And so I like that one a lot. Do you use Tailwind during training periods as well, or only during competitions? Um, I'll use it. I'll use a little bit of it during training periods, uh, just to get my body used to um, working off of that fueling okay. and nutrition. And so then, just to make sure you know everything is going right, because if it, I mean, with running, you know, you never know your body could reject something. And then you oh yeah. To, move to plan B and go from there. So <laughs> yeah, pretty soon it ends up to plan C. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with the, uh, tailwind, how much do you use per mileage? I guess, uh, I I'm, I'm new to this one. So I use one packet, one little packet. It's about 200 calories per packet. Okay. Uh, I use about 16, 17 ounces, um, water. Um, and I do one of those per hour of activity. So if I'm doing like five oh, okay. hours, yeah. I'll, pack, I'll pack, um, you know, three extra for, yeah. for eight station water. And then I just have two 16, 17 ounce bottles that I take with me. And so that's what I use, what I use for that. So it just kind of depends yeah. on the distance and stuff. So do you have any other hobbies other than running? Not really. I wouldn't say I have a lot of hobbies. My okay. biggest hobby is running. Uh, other than that, it's just, you know, it's, I, it's work. Majority, majority of my time either goes to work or my family. Same here. So what is your favorite shoe to run in and why? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I used to be really into Nikes, but, uh, as I made the transition into 
uh, longer distances, I go with um, uh, Hoka's right now. So that's what I'm currently running in is the Hoka Speed Goat Evos. Okay. Um, Hoka One I, One. Yeah, that's what I use right now. And so, and every time I hear Hoka, I'm always like, Hoka! Yep, Hoka One One. <laughs> then I'm always like, I wonder if they, they know that Indians are like, when they say Hoka, they're like, yeah, they're saying something yeah. else. <laughs> you know what's funny is like, when I started doing uh, trail racing down here in Texas, I would yell it out a few times here and there. Yeah. I, I got some looks just like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. what, like, what are you talking still, about? <laughs> they'll like that too. Even with uh, your, you know, your, your best war cry. Yeah. Some people are like, they, they look at you like you're being too loud. And we're like, well, <laughs> yeah. we're in the mountains and you know, yeah. there's, you know, like our people were in the mountains. So it's not like it's disrespectful. Yeah. It's if anything, it's like, yeah, oh. you know, we're, we're still here, you know, Yo, and, definitely. Hey, so is there anything that you do that other runners would th find weird? I don't know. You would have to talk to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't think so, but that's usually how it goes. All right. So We're, I'm going to get, I'm going to yeah. give you an example. So one thing that I do that, um, I don't know if everybody would find it weird. I love, uh, waterproof band-aids. And every time that I go on a run, training run, it doesn't matter. Every run that I'm on, I have waterproof band-aids on my nipples. <laughs> so, I, yeah, so it keeps them from going, getting raw. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling uh, you, man. I, depends, depends on where I'm going. I mean, I carry a, a knife with me, a little, um, a little hunting knife. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, that's just for, like, in case I get attacked by a bear, at least I'll be, you know – it, today is a good day to die, but then at least I'll be able to like, at least try to fight or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll probably lose, but it's nice knowing that I have a little, a little knife on me. Heck I don't yeah. know if that's, I don't know if that's weird, but I do that because of where I, where I run. Oh, of there's, course. There's mountain lions and there's, you know, other things too. So it's just kind of, yeah. Got to be ready for anything. All right. So let's move into indigenous trail. We know that that is your Instagram handle, but can you tell us the purpose behind Indigen Indigenous Trail? Yeah, so I talked about it uh, early, what, earlier on. Okay. Um, just not being able to relate with any, any non-native um, stories, you know, not being able to um, find motivation from Jim Wamsley or, you know, any of them like that. And so, yeah. um, you know, I saw Verna, Verna was doing um, Native women running, and she yeah. was highlighting um, Indigenous women who are these, you know, these awesome, amazing women who do everything, it seemed like. Yeah. And I was like, man, it'd be nice to have something like that for, like, trail running or just anything, you know? Right. Because then you don't see that a lot. And it was around around that time where it was like, people were just now slowly kind of like, Hey, you know, why are we not being invited to the table? You know, we're still here. We're indigenous. We've run for thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so then I was like, Hey, you know what? I, I listened to a podcast, uh, that she was a, a part of and I was like, I'm just going to do it. You know, that's what she did. And so yeah. I, I kind of chatted with her a little bit and I was like, what do you think? Do you think I can do this? And she kind of gave me some tips here and there. And then I went from there and then the idea behind it was highlight natives and indigenous people that are from our area. And then in hopes that people would be like, Hey, I didn't know they had a story like that. That's pretty yeah. cool. I, I'm in that same situation or, Hey, I've struggled with that same thing or, yeah. Uh, and then they they're like hey man this guy's doing it man i i probably can do it too you know so that right. was that was my my intention and then i, I had no idea what it was going to become i had no idea yeah i had no idea what it would change into and and so now it's just kind of, it's kind of its own thing it's still it's still in between what i started and, and, and what it is now yeah um, but i i really enjoy bringing different stories and different uh, experiences from all people, all indigenous people all over the world. Um, Cause they're like, you hear indigenous and then they're like, Oh, native American or 
they, yeah. they kind of they kind of limit that, yep. that term that term to one uh, group of people when in reality indigenous is like worldwide so oh yeah definitely and so that was my that was why I created it just to help with paving the way for indigenous people to see and find motivation through people who might be similar to them i i love it i i'm man i i can't tell you like i found so many different uh friends on there and like i've through your platform i've got to network with a lot of people as well so i'd like to thank you for that because yeah, you've yeah. you you've kind of boosted me through a lot of this as well but we often see the finished product of what you work on sponsoring events promoting other indigenous runners and your own uh ventures but we don't get to see the hustle and grind that goes behind it. Can you give us a little bit of behind the scenes of like what it's like to do that? Because I know you recently teamed up with uh, Native Women Running to create a virtual event. Can you kind of run us through that? Yeah. So the behind the scenes is is pretty. Uh, it's not as not as exciting as what uh, people the finished product. But yeah. So I bother a lot of people. I try to get stories. Um, I, and so I, most times I get um, denied. I get um, um, not so friendly messages, and which is fine. You know, I mean, yeah, everybody's busy and everybody's doing their own thing. And um, yeah. other other times I'm like, hey, it's, I, I'd like to do this story if you could help me. And then um, that part that part's tough. That part's tough to try to get stories from people because some people they're not comfortable with it and they don't understand that maybe where they're at right now might be motivation for the net, the, another person. Yes. And so that's the part where they don't see. And so having to explain that is tough and, um, and then get in the story. I go through it. I, I edit here and there. I help them edit it. Um, I proofread it like a lot of times <laughs> uh, I go through all their pictures. I, make sure that the it's the picture they want. If yeah. they need to change something, I go through that. Um, and then with events, that's the same thing too. You know, I, I ask uh, a lot of people for donations. Um, uh, most times they get denied, but I mean, I'm, I've done it so much now that it's getting denied isn't as um, uh, bad as when I first started. So, you know, I go through that, I ask them, hey, this is what we're doing. We're interested if you want to uh, donate a prize. Um, yeah. This is what we're looking for. Uh, and then they kind of leave it at that. And then sometimes they're like, hey, this is this is all I can give, which is perfect because I'll take anything. And then other times I'm like, I ask for specific running things. And I'm always like, what would I like to get for prizes, you know? Yes. And then um, then I give them out. And then that part's that part's pretty time consuming because it's like on top of my job, on top of my family. It's like a little thing that I have to like constantly do throughout the whole day or else I'm not going to get anything. Um, and then just promoting too. That's another thing a part about another thing about doing events is the promotion part and promoting is huge. Yes. If you don't, if you don't promote good, then it's like, nobody cares right so with today's society our social media helps us with um promoting yeah we can, we can spend a little money to help with like um a commercial on facebook or instagram or right do those little spots and that that helps a lot it reaches so many more people that we're not able to reach all at once because it it goes through and it does their little algorithm thing and yeah it'll expand uh, the algorithm expands it expands it and then they're like hey you've reached this many thousand people today <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh wow thanks and so those part those things that people don't see um it's just it's so time consuming to to do you know and then yeah but if the reward is what they see and the motivation and inspiration that they get from it and that's what makes it worth all the time. And I mean, I yeah. don't, I don't, I, I mean, everything I do is out of my own pocket and I don't really, you know, it's, it's oh, yeah. people don't, people don't see and people don't understand that a lot of the things that I do is 
out of my pocket and um they're just like oh why why don't you do do this right I'm like well I, I i can but it's it's gonna take this and this and this and this and uh it's easy it's easier said than done most yeah. times and so that's that's well, the behind the scenes well my my platform is fairly small but you're you're more than welcome to shoot some stuff my way and we'll help as much as we can yeah yep yeah, for sure so as a runner and a sponsor do you or indigenous trail have any other events in the works um not at the moment um i know mean, it's always it's always a goal to have multiple events and multiple distances and um with the virtual it makes it um kind of 50 50 good and bad uh to include everybody um and then the local events that those are a little smaller uh, so it kind of depends i'm really like i would like to do more yes but it's just right now uh with everything just being so up in the air it's kind of tough to to plan for anything but yes i think i think the um the one i do um regularly that i've started a couple years now is um running in the new year and so since we couldn't oh, do okay. it this past year um here uh, locally uh, that was when we teamed up with um verna and okay gave her the idea and she was like i'm in you know this is a great idea nice uh, and so we went from there and i think that i think that was that's one that um we might keep going to and just continue that and again i do my i do the one here locally where we we start at like 11 30 p.m on new year's day or new year's eve and then we yeah. run until the year comes in and then however long you want to run after that is on your own and i usually try to run for an hour um, yeah you know from 11 30 to 12 30 and then that's my way of bringing in the new year running heck, in the new year heck yeah that's awesome i love that all right so I think uh, I was researching through one of the runs that I'm trying to get into, uh, trying to find some time off to register for, the, if I'm saying this correctly, this saw, saw Watch 5050. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you still on par to do that? That's in September 25th and 26th, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. My spot is stamped and ready to go. I just got to uh, line up all of my uh, lodging and... Um, Let, let's fill in some of the there. list let's fill in the listeners with what that is that event oh so it's uh so it's two 50ks that are run back to back so one is run on the 25th in one location of the colorado area and then you run that that event and then you finish then you go drive to the next area <laughs> sleep if you can and then yeah. you you'll wake up the next day and go through the whole process again in a different new location and then yeah it's yeah i think these mountain range cool. these mountain ranges i think are like 10 miles apart so yeah they're yeah. pretty pretty vert heavy yes they are i've been yeah. looking at it yeah so I, i'm really excited to try to get my schedule worked out you know and i gotta be um accommodating to my coworkers as well. And that's, yeah, yeah. They, they cover me for so many other events and I have a full schedule for the year. So trying to squeeze these two in is kind of tough. I'm still trying though. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be, I'm sure there'll be a cross country meet that I'll probably miss. And you know, with the travel day being on Friday, that's going to be, yes. Yeah. It's going to be tough because traveling, that's the new thing for me too, is like travel days, Oh yeah, your, like running event schedule that that's new to me. So that part is it's fun, but it's a little difficult to try to like get everything around yep. your schedule, and then you get there, and then you're like, okay, I got to <laughs> do this, and then I got to check in, and then I got to make sure I got all my ra my racing gear and my racing nutrition, and then boom, then it's like race day, and you're like, all right, I right, forgot this, but all right, that's it, <laughs> yep. boo, you know. <laughs> all right. So your most recent feat, the Bighorn 100, let's talk about that. What was your training regiment like? Like, and how long was that training regiment? 
So I started my training, uh, I run year round, but I started my training around um, December, uh, around December time. And then I went from, I went from there um, and just did, um, yeah, different runs throughout the week and then the month. And then I did a few races here and there as preparation because um, that's what I've always done. And I feel yeah. like that helps, that helps. Um, me i guess personally some people were like oh you're racing this you're running this time what? <laughs> that's not that's not 100 mile training that's racing that's way different than this and yeah in, in my mind you know it, it does help it does help with those um little things that i need and uh yeah so my build-up was months in december and then um in march we did a 50 mile race down in california and then, um, you know, long runs on the weekends, yep. uh, you know, back to back, um, morning and evening runs <laughs> on some days, um, you know, you know, it just, it would just depend on, it would depend on the weeks, weeks mileage and the weeks hours. And then on top of that, um, being that. Uh, I guess I'm in a position now where people are like, Hey, we, we would like to invite you down to our run and we'll, <laughs> yep. we'd like to sponsor your, um, uh, uh, entry fee. If you would yep. come down, then I'm like, Oh yeah, of course, you know, for sure. I'll, I'll do that any day. So then I had those, uh, little things on, on top of that, which is again, a new experience and it's really enjoyable to have people who actually want you to come down and just be a part of their events. Yeah. Which I've never, I've never been in that situation ever in my whole life. And then now people are like, Hey, we want that guy to come to our run, you know? Yep. So, <laughs> That's awesome, man. So that all those, and then, you know, just, I guess, I don't know. I don't really think that my training is too spectacular, but you know, all my friends are like, well, you're, you, you know, you're doing this and you're at top 10 and you know, this, and you're, you're running this fast. So it's, it must be working. So, I mean, but on Strava, I think I saw that you ran like a hundred miles a week. Uh, yeah, I have before. Um, it was in August. There was a, there was a little challenge. Okay. And, uh, there was a little challenge and it was 22 days and, um, uh, it was, um, run as many miles as you can the <laughs> the 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 person who was putting it on yeah was just run 100 miles for, in 22 days that was the that was the event but yeah. i don't think the person knew it was going to change into something else and i don't think the person knew that me and um my friend phyllis would be going head to head and i, as I was ta i was telling her too i was like all right just so you know i'm gonna be racing you and i know you're gonna be racing me so yeah let's, let's go, you know? And then, um, we started and then I think I ran like a hundred miles in the first five days. Oh man. And then, uh, Phyllis was right behind me. She was like six days. She was right behind me. And it was like one day I was ahead and then the next day. So 22 days, I think, um, we both ran over 300 miles. Oh, just, some... just by ourselves. Uh, and, and so be, between me and her, we ran, over 600 miles together um Man. and that was just going head to head yeah well and that's she, somehow... and, she, and she and she was the one who who won it all she oh i was glad she won too because i was like man I, I i threw everything at her if she wins she's big time yeah. so yeah and well, then, that's some healthy competition. That yeah, well. yeah. She beat me by seven miles. So I was like, oh man. <laughs> uh, let's see. So back to the big big horn one hundred. Um, was is that course? Is that a a loop or is that out and back? No, it's a out and back. You you start out um, running out forty eight miles, and then coming back, you they extend the um, finish fifty two miles. Oh, so okay. You, um, once you get to a point. Uh, B, you go back to point A, and uh, okay. yeah, there's a lot of climbing. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of good views. There's a lot of yeah, you name it. There, it's there. Yeah, I I was looking at the map, and the vert alone was like twenty thousand feet like, uh, over the course. Yeah, I think it's like um, closer to like sixteen. I don't know, on, okay. on the watch, but 
yeah, it's there is a lot of climbing. Like the first section is like 13 miles of um, just up. You just kind of <laughs> straight up, and so. Um, what? What was the? Uh, was there a cutoff time? Um, I, yeah, there's cutoff times. I, I wasn't worried about cutoff times. Me, okay. so I wasn't really like focused on the cutoff times. I had, I did have my own personal um, times that I felt uh, yeah. I, I could kind of like shoot for. Yeah. And um, I had a couple A, B, and C goals. And so then uh, I kind of went from that. I just kind of based it off of that. And everything was calculation from then. Like it was like my crew, my basically my brother. My brother was like, all right, if you come at this time, we will expect you at this time. Okay. And, uh, and then it was like, yeah, so it was fun. It was, it was, uh, quite the experience. Did you, uh, run that one solo or did you have a crew? I had a crew. Um, I had no pacers though. Uh, okay. All my pacers, uh, they were like, oh, you're going to be too fast. You'll be, you'll be way too <laughs> fast for us. When we're not going to be able to keep up. And then I was like, I don't think you understand my, like m my pace is going to be anywhere from 12 minute mile to yeah. 20 minute mile um and i was like on the climbs it's gonna be 20 minute miles on up so it's yeah. like i'm not gonna be going i'm not gonna be setting any course records anytime soon so. <laughs> but everybody was like oh no you're too strong yeah i'm just gonna have to find someone who's who's faster and stronger than yeah. us so i was like ah oh, i'll just do it alone i guess since i know the yeah. course so i was by myself as far as running i was by myself but i did have a crew you uh, you talked about earlier about Tailwind. Is did you use uh, Tailwind on this one? I did. I used Tailwind and I used uh, Spring Energy Energy Nutrition. Okay, those were the two that I used. Um, the Spring Energy. Those are the all natural ones. Is that, yeah, is that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, those were ones that I I I wouldn't say I'm a fan of, but I'm a fan of the I guess the ingredients. Okay. Um, and then where i'm live there's you know there's nothing you have to either order everything or go to yeah. Bozeman, which is like like almost 200 miles away from where i live just to get anything so right um, so then i i use those um just because of the the ingredients and i knew that if anything it's not <clears throat> going to make my stomach go bad right uh, not going to really do much as far as like negative to my system yeah uh, but at the same time too i have an iron stomach so <laughs> you know pretty much anything that i use so Did spring energy spring energy nutrition it was something new that i used okay. um and i i guess it was one of those things where it was like um one of those don't don't do don't start using something that you haven't used ever i was yep. I used it right away i didn't, <clears throat> I didn't care because i know my stomach and, yeah uh, and it worked did, it worked for me so that's good did the uh course have stocked eight stations uh some of them were stocked they had majority had water um okay. and then some had like um um tailwind and some had like uh uh soda and like other things i don't know i didn't even i mean all i would cared about was water so i didn't really i didn't really look around how was my, the oh go ahead i'm sorry yeah my my um friend was like hey you got to stop and you got to eat you got to yep. eat this at this <laughs> aid station at least you know he's like i don't know what it is but when you're that far into a race it's just it's just good so there's yeah. things I, I ate but i ate really small portions though okay how was the uh, weather? It was uh, a little warm, um, it, but it was dry. There wasn't as much mud as there usually is. Um, that race being uh, a race that's notorious for its mud and famous for its mud, uh, um, there was hardly any mud. Did the, ele was, uh, did the weather change with the elevations? Um, yeah, it did. So the, we started at the bottom, it was probably like, I don't know, 75 ish. Yeah. And then through the Canyon, it went up to like eighties. And then once we got up to the top of that one, it dropped down back down to seventies. And then the further we went, it went, it just dropped down 
and I think the coldest it got was around like 40s. Okay. So it wasn't wasn't too bad, but it wasn't to a point where it was like freezing cold, like in some years where it snows and rains and Ooh. you know everything. So yeah, we were, we were pretty lucky. I guess pretty lucky this year to have a pretty dry um, year. Did you use uh, drop bags at all? Like, cause you talked about 40 degree weather. Did you have to? Yep. 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 So in the past, um, that race, they have a requirement that you need to have rain pants and rain, uh, gear in at least one of your drop bags. Um, this year they were like, doesn't really matter what you have in it. Uh, they asked, they did ask us, uh, optional to bring a long sleeve and, um, a jacket, uh, a rain jacket or a wind jacket to have. And so, um, it wasn't required. Like in okay. like some years they're like, they require you to take rain pants and okay. rain jacket and a, a poncho. Oh, okay. So we lucked out. <clears throat> well, congratulations on the finish. I mean, yeah, uh, thanks. is this your first 100, 100 mile finish? Yep, this is my, my this is my first attempt, and I finished it, and that so I was pretty excited. Congratulations! Uh, tell us about that feeling when you're crossing that finish line, and you know you're done, and you have accomplished your goal. Give tell us about that feeling. Oh man, it's like a I don't know, it's like an out of body experience. The way I can explain it, like almost like um, kind of like a movie. You know, you're like nobody else sees how how far you ran. Yep. Uh, the terrain you've been running in, the the experience that you've uh, gone through so far, you know the the pain that you felt. Uh, yeah. All they see, all they see is the start, and hey, everybody's going, yeah, awesome, yeah, woo, see you later, yeah, good luck, yeah, and then yeah, then we're in the race, nobody sees us until uh, aid stations are where we can meet crew. Yeah, and then when you come back, same thing. You know, you know, you you get to that point where you're like you're hurting, feet are probably blistered. Um, uh, yeah, you know, your legs are um, beyond tired and maybe sore or whatever it might be. And then you get to that finish line, and then you're just like you're you see the finish line, and you you're running towards it, and then all of these different emotions go through your mind. Like, you know, you get really emotional, like. Oh, I did it. And then like all of a sudden you're like really happy, like, oh man, yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And then you like get you get to that other stage of like, yeah, you know, I yeah, I did it, you know, awesome. Yep. And then you move into another, uh, you know, you go through all those uh, emotions and uh but it's just it's a really good moment. And uh crossing that finish line, you're like feel you feel almost I guess feel those with you or you feel right. that closeness with the creator or oh yes it's some one of those experiences where you have to go out and experience it for yourself because my experiences is, is it might be different than what you've experienced and right all of them are unique in their own way so it's an amazing feeling right it is one of the probably one of good moments in in one's life to finish a, a pretty big race like that the part that i really enjoyed was once I crossed that finish line and I, I was made sure I was present because I, I, I didn't want to like let that feeling go. And eventually yeah. it goes away, you know, you know, after like your body starts to hurt and you start, <laughs> yeah. to, feel, you start to feel, you know, a, a blister or something on your foot or yeah. like a little twinge on your foot or your muscle yeah. aches a certain way. And all, so. all that adrenaline just goes away and Hey, pain, what's yep. up, man? You know? Yep. So what was your recovery like? Oh man, my rec my recovery was pretty scary. Um, that Sunday, I was yeah. I woke up. I was the first one up. I was like ready to go. I was walking around. I was sore, but yeah. I wasn't really bad to the point where I was like, I've run some fifty mile races where I was like I couldn't walk for like a, cu a couple of days. Yeah, uh, this one was scary because I was like sc I felt scary good. Like if I would have ran, I probably could have ran on Sunday. Um, so I took a day off. I took, I, you know, I gave myself a week. I told myself I would take one week off of no running. Um, yeah. As much as I want to run and as much as I'm chomping at the bit, um, I, you know, I, I put that 
that limit. I said, Hey, you know, give yourself one week. And then after that Monday, then you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah. so the first few days, um, I was a little bit sore in my calf area uh, yeah. and my butt, my butt area, my arms, my hands were sore from using my checking poles. Yeah. Uh, my shoulders were sore from my pack. Um, you know, after carrying it for so long, it, you know, yeah. your pack, your pack eventually gets heavy. Um, yeah. didn't lose any nails. Good. I had two small blisters on the back, uh, outside of my, um, heel, which yeah. it wasn't to the point where if I put pressure on my foot, I couldn't like walk. So it was like, it was in a good spot. It was a good, you know, there were two small ones. So it was like, I was like, man, is this, if this <laughs> is how it is to run a hundred miles, man, sign me up for another one. Cause <laughs> like I said, I've run fifties where I haven't been able to run for yeah like a whole week. And so, uh, just been kind of relaxing, um, just doing a lot of movement. Uh, they call it active recovery. So yeah, um, going outside, doing small little tasks outside, playing with my kids, uh, playing with their dog. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing too exerting. Yeah. did a lot of swimming. Hey, so I saw in your pictures, you were, uh, sporting the, uh, mountain ultra tech yeah. shirt. So yeah. tell us about that. Yeah, so I, um, I'm a part of that team, Mountain 10. Um, and uh, they gave us some pretty sweet shirts. And so I used, I used that shirt. I used a, a long sleeve uh, cooling shirt. So anytime that it gets wet or sweat gets on it, it yeah. any, any, any kind of breeze that hits it, oh man, it, it cools you off. And so I used that underneath it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty good little shirt. I was, I was surprised. I was like, I pretty much did everything you're not supposed to do when it comes to <laughs> running a uh, hundred miles, I guess, you know, I, yeah. I didn't train in that shirt at all. I think he sent it like a couple weeks before the race. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't use it. I only used it like one time um, to run and it was a race. Yeah. And, uh, I won that race. And then, um, and then that was when he was saying, oh, these shirts are DNF proof. So I was like, oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have wore this shirt just in case, you know, something goes bad. Yeah. Shirt, you know what I mean? That's uh, good. I really appreciate everything that he does. You know, he's trying to d diversify uh, the start lines. And Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, that, I was like, man, that's, that's what I've been trying to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, I'm glad to be a part of that team and look forward to everything that comes with that, man. All right. So is there anything that we've missed or is there any subject that you want to revisit and elaborate on before we move on to the next section? No, that was, that was good. Thanks, man. That's oh good heck yeah. Questions. Good questions, man. So here's a little something that, uh, I think you would appreciate. So I'm going to give a shout out to the gas cap renegades. Uh, they have an indigenous podcast. And they are 40 episodes deep. The next section is inspired by their format. So thank you, Levi and Jason, for that. Y'all be sure to check out the Trailcast available on all podcasting platforms. And be sure to like and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Keyword search the Gas Cap Renegades. This next section is the five to stay alive. These are the questions that I ask every guest about themselves and what keeps them going. Scott, are you ready to answer the five to stay alive? Let's do this. All right, here we go. Question number one. Do you run with or without music? Both. R walk us through that and give us one song to add to the Spotify playlist. So if I'm doing big races, I like to use my hearing to hear people around me, behind me, in front of me. Um, and that's big with my racing. But as far as training runs go, there are some days where you need that little boost. Yeah. Um, or it's just just background noise too you know i mean sometimes running in the dark um, yeah it, it's a lot better than hearing a lot of coyotes <laughs> uh one song uh let's see there's a lot of songs but uh epmd uh symphony 2000 all right we're gonna get that on a playlist and that is your song question number two what competition or race is on your bucket list i really don't have a bucket list but I mean, of course, Western States, Hard Rock, Leadville, and Crazy Crazy Mountain 100. That was one. That was one that I've always. Every time we've driven by there, 
I'm always like, man, one day there'll be a race there and I'm going to run it. And then sure enough, boom, you know, so that's... you. Get, are you going to run that one? I am. I'm in there, yeah. Oh, man, that's going to... I, I, I just looked at the map and I'm, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> so. yeah, I am. I am too. All right. So no, question number three, in your opinion, what is one thing that an athlete should stay away from in their journey to becoming a better runner? Pop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, people who don't call it pop, what is it? Uh, give it, give uh, us some other names for pop. Pepsi, Coke, soda, <laughs> uh, a cold one. Uh, <laughs> that fizzy stuff, that stuff you drink that burns on the way down. <laughs> um, soda pop. Yeah, I mean, I I used to drink pop, and then uh, a couple years ago, I just kind of kind of just gave it gave it up. I yeah, you know, it was just something that I was like, you know, it's, I can let this go now. And, yeah, uh, let it go, and I've had a lot of success without soda or pop. How, so, how long has it been since you've had one? A couple of years, uh, three, three years. Oh now. wow! Yeah, well, that's awesome, man. So I'm gonna start staying away from soda yeah. just so I can be just so I can be like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, number four. Finish this statement. When it comes to long distance running, Scott cannot leave the house without his shoes. I like shoes a lot. Yeah. So everywhere I go, I have a pair of shoes in my truck or in my car. There's okay. always an extra, there's always an extra pair of running shoes. Um, I, I like to say, I would like to say my watch cause it's pretty much on me from <laughs> the start of the day to the end, but I've run without my watch before and haven't felt the guilt. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't like that feeling of like getting to a place and being like, I should run and then going and oh, not yes. having shoes. So. Yep. Or this is question number five. Do you have a running mantra? I do. Mine's mine's a little different than I guess everyone else's. Okay, go ahead. Um Awego da ego speak. Be up solo guk. Be hook callish chick. Dale be skip go a bagarik. Um and then I just I go through that over and over and over. I, I love that. Can you translate that for us? That just, you know, lets people know who I am. My, yeah. my my name, who I am. Um, I'm a I'm an Absalo guy, uh, crow, uh, and then my my clans as well. So I say my my name, which my name is my my crow name um, is uh, seen by the whole world. And so I say Awego da ego speak. I am seen by the whole world. Be uh, Absaloguk. I am crow. Be I am a ties the bundle. Dela be a skeptic about it. Bagadik, I am a child of bad war deeds. That's what I say. That's what I use. On top of that, I also use uh, fight through the pain and success will follow. Man, that that's amazing. I I love that one. Hey Scott, are we missing anything? Do we need to hit anything before we close this one out? No, that was that was good. Thank you. Good questions. Hey. Definitely, man. Hey, thank you for coming on the show, Scott. Keep doing what you're doing because you are definitely winning, my friend. It was an honor to have you, and I'll see you out there on the trails. Yep. Many ahos. Thank you. It was yes, glad. sir. I was good to be here, and keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate everything that you're doing, too. You know, what you've accomplished so far with all your big races and being a good inspiration for all of us. So thank you. All right. Thank you, man. We'll see you out there, bud. Yep. See ya. We're approaching the finish line, but before we cross, here's some news and views. That was Scott seen by the whole world flat lip. His passion for running encompasses the value of selfless service. There's a quote by Dean Carnassus and Scott unknowingly, but perfectly paraphrased it when I asked him to explain the feeling of accomplishing his goal. The original quote goes, if you want to run, run a mile. If you want to experience a different life, run a marathon. If you want to talk to God, run an ultra. Let's relive Scott's answer. And uh, crossing that finish line, you're like, feel, you feel almost, I guess, feel those with you or you feel right. that closeness with the creator or. Oh yes. It's some one of those experiences where you have to go out and experience it for yourself because my experiences is it might be different than what you've experienced and right all
all of them are unique in their own way. So it's an amazing feeling, right? It is one of the probably one of good moments in, in one's life to finish a, a pretty big race like that. Thank you for that, Scott. And congratulations on your finish. You're doing big things and we're definitely here with continued support. You're an educator, an athlete, a coach, you're family oriented and your selfless service has you promoting other native athletes. You're sacrificing your time and money to sponsor events, all the while you're making time to accomplish your own running goals. To top that off, it's only three days past your 100 mile finish and you traveled home and made time to be on this podcast. Give yourself some credit, my friend, because you definitely deserve it. You're awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. It's working and we can all learn from it. This last thank you is for incorporating your culture into this episode. It is most definitely appreciated. I'll see you on the trails, my friend. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> Next, we launch a store. It's kind of overwhelming at the moment, but we're staying with it. We haven't officially promoted it because we only have stickers available, but that isn't stopping y'all from buying. At this rate, we're gonna have to restock the store before we officially launch. But after we launch, we plan to have shirts, sweaters, stickers, runner's journals, dog bandanas, and my favorite, travel coffee tumblers. We also have another product in the works if we can get this particular running brand on board. All the products will have the Run True Diaries logo on them in some shape, form, or fashion. I have roughly eight t-shirt designs that I'm messing with at the moment, and we're not sure how we're gonna put them up just yet, but some ideas that we have are limited prints or seasonal selling sessions. Regardless, stay tuned because once the samples come in and we have a better understanding of the process, the products, and the quality, we're gonna fine tune the store. The store can be found through the Run True Diaries Facebook and Instagram pages. The link is gonna be in the bio, and you can search us on Shopify, look for Run True Diaries. Check out the shipping bags that we have. Uh, these alone get me excited. And if you're listening to the podcast, come on over to the Run True Diaries YouTube channel and check those out. With that, we cross the finish line. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, guest recommendations, you can contact me at runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Again, that is runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Keyword search, Run Shoe Diaries. Thank you for listening to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast, episode three with Scott Flatlit. Until next time, remember that with each step comes the decision to take another. So keep putting one foot in front of the other because it's amazing what you can do on your own two feet. I'm out.